Welcome to our program. Eddie, it, actually, in, in my life, the very first, I guess you'd say the very first show I ever saw was in Philadelphia back in the 40s. Eddie Fisher was, at this point, a senior in, or a junior or a sophomore in high school, South Philadelphia High School. You performed on a show called the Magic the, Lady or something? The Magic Lady Supper Club. Supper Club. <laughs> and my mother took me down on the, uh, the, the L train in Philadelphia, and I can still close my eyes. I was at the back of the room and see you and some other people up there and you sang songs and Skipper Dawes was the MC. You don't look that old. Oh, well, I was a very little kid. This is bef probably before I even went into kindergarten. And uh, so I always feel a special kinship with people from my hometown of Philadelphia. I can't believe it, all the, the Philadelphians that I meet. Yeah, it's But I, I don't think I've met anyone as as good looking as you from Philadelphia. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'd like to have your face and um, and, well, and I'll my take voice. your voice. No, but I'll take your voice for you. Right. If you want, if you, we could do a, fa a face and a voice transplant. Can it be done? No, fortunately. No. Uh, you're here because we're going to talk about a few things. Uh, your book, my Eddie, my life, my loves, is in paperback. You're going to be performing down at the totally revitalized Atlantic City, at the Sands, I believe, on the seventh of February, and you're opening. No, no, the eleventh. Uh, eleventh. Eleventh. The eleventh of February, and you're opening. Uh, uh, that the Indigo Supper Club here in New York, which is a new club I've not been to. Brand new club, and it's a, it's a beautiful club, and uh, I really am, uh, I'm looking forward to working in New York. It's been a while. Yeah, 1967 at the Palace was the last time. The Palace Theater, that yes. was a big show. Yes. Big show. You know, there's a lot I want to run through here. We can, I want to talk about your music, uh, the way you approach putting your act together, but I want to start out with what we were talking about before we came on the air. And that is the state of your health. In your book, you talk a great deal about your dependency on meth methamphetamine. Methamphetamine. But You're that was a long time ago. I know it was. I know it a was. A very long time ago. This, my question is this. You go back into when that, when did you end that? When did you totally pull away from That's that? That's 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Yes. Right? How would you assess its effect on your personality while you were doing the drug. I mean, when you're in it, you don't realize why you're doing it or what it's doing to you. But now that you've got 10 years of hindsight, how did it really screw up your behavior? I don't know that it um, got me right away because I was under doctor supervision yeah. Doctors for a were long, giving these long time. Yeah. And most of the time in the beginning. And uh, I, I didn't notice any uh, negative changes. I only noticed, recognized positive in my voice and in my... Energy. Uh, I had to feel great. I had all of this false energy. Maybe it's not false. It was, it was energy. Yeah. I used to call it false all the time. But um, it, it gets a hold... But once it gets a hold of you, after you take it for a long time, that's when you are in trouble. Yeah. Then it affects everything. How did you be, how did you become affected by it? When you said the low, in the beginning it was something that was good, it helped you. Right. At the end it was something that was hurting you. How would well, you describe more than, how more it was than hurting be, you? More than before the end. Yeah. But um, how was it hurting me? It was hurting me that I became so dependent on it. Uh, I would it? I wouldn't go on stage without getting a shot from a doctor, from my doctor. Yeah. I wouldn't go on. I once held up an audience for two hours because the doctor hadn't come in from New York to, to, to Philadelphia, to, take care of you. to the Rotten Casino. To, to take care of you. Yes. When you, uh, w was there one specific moment, Eddie, when you knew that you had to, that you, that this had developed into a giant problem, that you had to beat this problem? Yeah. What was that moment? A fellow named Jack Kelly. I think he was in Philadelphia, too. Jack Kelly was, uh, was the late... Princess Grace. No, no, this oh, is, different no, Jack, this is Kelly. a Jack Kelly who was a, uh, a friend of mine and a friend of Elvis's and a friend of Andy Williams who was with the uh, Narcotics Division, Deputy oh. Commissioner of Commissioner for California, Nevada, and uh, Hawaii. And uh, he came to my house in Bel Air one time. This was really the, the end of the beginning. And he, he came to my house. And he looked at me, he says, come here. He took me in front of the mirror. He says, I give you six months. He said, no, I give you three. I think a couple days later, I was on my way to Switzerland to For go to total, a clinic. Total clinic. Yeah. Cure. Yeah. But 
that com the road coming back is rough. Too. Oh, I would think that it would because be. Because I always thought I could not sing. I couldn't sing without this wonderful thing called But that's called funny because when I saw you in the makeup room, the second or third, after I introduced myself being from Philadelphia, the second or third thing I said is, how's your voice? And you didn't really know what I meant by that, but I guess what I meant was, to the extent that the voice is part of one's health and could be a reflection of how you live your life and take care of yourself. It is. And here we're it dealing is. with Eddie Fisher, who at one point had this extraordinary choir boy clarity to your voice. We're going to hear well, it. Well, I, st I still have a... Yeah. A, how has it been affected by all this? That's my question. Have you abused it, or is it... I'm a very, very lucky man in, the, in that I laid off singing. You must sing all... You it's must, a muscle, you, yeah. you must use that muscle. Yeah. If you don't... But the miracle was that maybe it got a rest. And it's better now... Forgive me for my... No. It's better now than it ever has been. You told me that uh, when you first broke in, everyone said you were this natural. When you That's were 17, right. 18 years yes, old. Yes, don't touch. Don't touch don't that touch voice. It. Don't touch it. You know, you'll ruin it. You know, the, don't train. Don't. don't train it. It's natural and comes out easy. And this is terrible. This is the most wrong thing in the whole world. For, for a professional you, singer. For anybody. Yeah. You must train for anything. Well, what, Always. When did you have to go train your voice? I mean, if you had this great instrument. What, now. You're doing it now. I'm do, I've been doing it for the last year and a half. And how are you doing it? You going to I go to a coach. My musical director, Colin Romoff, mm -hmm. is my coach. So you work a regular, just like an athlete, you work That's a practice right. schedule, That's right. and you do it. Yes. All right, so now, when you go into the Sands Atlantic City, yeah. and you step out on the stage, you have performed on stages all around the world. I want to ask you this, ob as objectively as possible, of all the clubs, the, the bistros, the boats, everything, what's your, has, in your life, been your favorite club you've ever played? The, your favorite place. That's really tough. The owners are not watching. The place oh, that just made you feel the best. I tell you, that, that's, I think it's easy. Most, if you have a great audience, that's, yeah. see, that's my true love. That's really my true love. I mean, I was in love with a few women in my life, but Is that my, true? That's you were really true. in love with those women, huh? You were madly in love with those women, weren't no, you? There, there may have been two or yeah. three. Yeah. No, I believe that. I believe that. But, but uh, my, my true love is an audience. That's my true love. But I neglected my true love and went, took a fork in the road and uh, got into a lot of trouble that no other singer ever got into or anybody else got into this much As much trouble. trouble. I mean, well, not, I, not, just, singer, the, anyway. not just the publicized marital rifts, but the actual physical problems. No, no, it was yeah. the getting involved with women, love. Yeah. I fell in love with love. With love everlasting, a but love, love fell out with you. Me. Yeah, I understand <laughs> right. that. So you, you, but just to get back, you cannot Not, name one club. Yes, I can. What is it? The Riviera, at Fort Lee, New Jersey, was the most beautiful club. That at Frank, when I interviewed Frank Sinatra, he talked about that club. There was an open sky. That's right. And yeah, he remembered that. He's in, also. Yeah. He didn't I, say remi it was I reminded him. I talked to Frank at Carnegie Hall closing night, when he played there last time, and I asked him a silly question. I said, Frank. You've had a lot of highlights in your life. What was one? He looked at me like I was nuts, you know, because he's had, yeah. you know, had it all. How can you pick one like that? Yeah. And I said, he looked at me, he looked. I said, the Riviera, Portly, New Jersey. He turned around, and we knew that Sinatra look. Yeah. And he said, yeah. That was it. Yeah, he mentioned that when I interviewed yeah. him. Well, let's take a break. Well, let me ask you one question before the break. Let's talk about I like you very Thank much. Thank you. I appreciate that. Let's talk about the other E.T., Elizabeth Taylor. That's the other E.T. Oh. <laughs> if she hadn't met, <laughs> if she hadn't met Richard Burton, do you think you'd still be married? Oh, no way. No way. Okay. No way. All right. But, fair answer. But we did have a great love. I mean, it's been forgotten. It, I mean, uh, and I, we would do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we had a, as great a love. She, she's forgotten. You know? oh, how do you know she's forgotten? Oh, I know. I know Elizabeth. Do you think she doesn't? But you have not forgotten. No, you, I will never forget. Do you think you could fall back in love with her again? In the next life. 
Not in this one. Not in this it one. It couldn't happen. No. Could not happen no twice. No way. All right, let's take a break and we will continue Especially with... when you're in love. But... <laughs> you're already in love with someone else. We'll be right back. Let me make you smile. Let me do a few tricks, some old and then some new tricks. I'm very versatile. Same you. Ah, oh, let me. <laughs> you did twice. <laughs> well, uh, let me tell you, you sound wonderful. It's great to hear the voice without any ma uh, any mic or any amplification. Just the real voice like that. Your voice sounds great. Well, you know, that's part of when I train, when I work. It sounds with, strong. I work. I work with no uh, amplification, and that gives you. You learn more about yourself. You hear more. Yeah. We talk about your life and your loves, right? Which is actually the title of your autobiography. How would you like to change? Maybe you don't want to change. I don't know. But how would you? Well, let me let me put this another way. What is the difference between what your image is today, which is like Eddie Fisher, the comeback kid who's written this autobiography and who's fallen in love all these times? He's had his relationships thrashed out in the press. What would you like to change about that image now? Not go back and change it, but for the next 20 years of your life? I'm not going to live 20 more years, but the life I've led, <laughs> I'm going to live 20 more years. <laughs> Thank you. Please. I hope you live 20 I, more years. I don't think so. No? But whatever I live, All right. I am I'm very happy. Uh, to change something? Yeah. What would you like to change about your image over from this point forward to the rest of your life? I would like to have not made that mistake of putting love for women before my love for singing. That must come first. I can never do that again. But as you look back on, I mean, you know, like the great song, Regrets, I've had a few. That's, that's... I have no regrets. You have no regret. No regrets No, at all. no real regrets, no. Uh, how do you, how do you feel about yourself as a parent? I mean, oh. through all of the, is... Oh. I am, I am the worst. I was the worst, but I am a new parent now. I mean, I have four grown children. You know, I have Carrie, and who's, I don't want to tell you how old she is, because she doesn't like me to tell everybody. You she, don't have to. She's 23. She's mighty good. And my son is going to be 25 in three weeks. Son, my son, Todd. My daughter, Jolie, is 15. And my daughter, Tricia, who's going to be in Atlantic City and at the Indigo with, yeah. she's going to... She's not going to say. They all have my voice. They do. They all have my voice. Well, we we don't better. Really? Better. Well, why? Why don't? I mean, this could be like the the trap. You you could be you could reemerge as the Osmonds. No, the mothers won't. You could be the, like the mothers, the won't, mothers won't let them on stage no, with no, you. No, no, you do. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm kidding. Right? No, no. It's I have my two babies, yeah. 14 and 15. Uh, Carrie, I don't know why she's not singing. She can sing. She's a really good singer. Yeah, she's yeah. a fantastic. She's done some duets for, for fun with Paul Simon that are just, yeah. just glorious. She's a marvelous musician also. But my two little babies, Jolie and Tricia, 14 and 15, have a bigger voice than I have, mm. and and they they are, they train, and they are. So we're going to be hearing from them. Oh, you're going to hear going from, to be them. from them. Yeah. Let's go back to the early, early part of your career. You, you, you uh, attribute really Eddie Cantor, among other people, but particularly mm. Eddie Cantor as discovering you. I think in the book I don't really give him that. He did open all the doors. Help launch you. Yeah. To, Helped. Yeah. Nationally. What did Eddie Cantor like Skipper about Eddie Skipper Dawes Fisher? is the man. Skipper that, Dawes was the fellow in Philadelphia who right. gave you a break when you were in high school. Right. There were a lot of people, yeah. but Skipper, but there were a lot of people that always helped me. There was a man named Milton Blackstone, who was my mentor, who was, I was more than my father, if my father will forgive me for saying that. And uh, we are together, and we've been together again for three years, and uh, we are closer now than we've ever been. Mm. And, uh, what was your question? Uh, the, que the question was uh, Eddie, about, Eddie, about Eddie Cantor. Yes. What I was wondering about Eddie Cantor was, uh, there's a whole generation of people, maybe two generations, that don't even remember Eddie Cantor. I mean, yes. what kind of guy he was and, and so forth. But what was there about the chemistry between you and Eddie Cantor, who was truly a throwback to the era of vaudeville and Al Jolson, which somehow came through in the way you sing? There is a 
uh, bravo in the, way, in the way you sing, that release that you have, that does remind people of Al Jolson. And you've done tributes to Al Jolson in your material. But I, don't, I sing his songs, but I, I don't imitate Al no, Jolson. You don't do, no, you do not imitate him, but, but you do his material, and there's a similar feeling somehow. Well, but, I, that, that, may, that could be. I mean, I like... I liked his projection, his intensity, mm -hmm. his uh, uh, drama. Today they, they make fun of it, you know, when they hear Jolson, you know. But well, that's part of the music yeah. business. But there was, was the part. I'm of looking the for the, the chemistry between you and Eddie Cantor. What was there that, that clicked? Why? Milton, why did it, he... it was Milton Blackstone. He forced it. it. Of course, Eddie Cantor was known as a discoverer. He oh, discovered Dinah Shore and Deanna Durbin and Bobby Breen and the Mad Russian and, and many, many people that people don't know about yeah. anymore. But he was a discoverer of talent. And Milton Blackstone knew this. The, the United, oh, everybody in America knew it, you know. Mm -hmm. And for Eddie Cantor to hear me, he, Milton Blackstone just wanted Eddie Cantor to hear me sing. And it was really tough because Eddie Cantor did not want to hear me sing. Yeah, he just didn't want to go to where you. Were. No, it was he was at Gross Singers. Oh, I see. At the time. Yeah. But Milton Blackstone had to do a lot of convincing. But once he heard me sing, he came out on the stage and said, "How would you like to go on tour with me all over the country?" And then I have five daughters. I want you to meet. He had me marry, marrying one of his daughters already. So it was the voice. The he when Cantor heard the voice. Yeah. That was it. That was yeah, it. I, I, I have to take so. a break for a commercial. We'll be back. We're going to continue yeah, with really Eddie like Fish. Well, I appreciate that very much. But we'll be back Philadelphia, guys. And we'll be back <laughs> right. after this. It just... won't be just any night. Tonight there will be no morning star. about Eddie Cantor when he came up to you when you came this was the big break in your life right he comes up to you what, what did he say you don't have to do exact imitation no, what I don't, like? I I'll be you you be Eddie Cantor I'm, you be me I'm, I'm 19 year old shake, you gotta shake a lot well, hi, you're very nervous yes. well it's nice to see you Mr. Cantor ladies and gentlemen Eddie ladies and gentlemen in the past I've discovered such youngsters as Deanna Durbin, Dinah Shore, Bobby Breen. This past Labor Day weekend at a summer resort in the Catskill Mountains called Grossings, I found a new boy. In my opinion, in my opinion, I think he's destined to become the most important singer of popular songs in America. It's a pretty nice introduction. Did you remain, when you started to fall on the hard times with the bad publicity and the stuff with the relationships, was Eddie Cantor still around? Did he ever call you up and say, what are you doing, Fisher? Never. What's going on in your life? He never did. No, he didn't. Never, not to the, not to the, uh -huh. he always, we did develop a very close, in the end, um, because I was very young. But, and when then, you met him, you were young. Yes, and then I, I'm still very I'm old in years, but I'm, I'm a boy, and I'll always be part boy. Yeah. I think but that came out when you were involved in Saturday Night Live. I ha Saturday Night Live? Yeah, didn't you do Saturday Night Live? No, I, just did a, I did a picture just now for Saturday Night Live I thought people. When you were hanging around the Saturday Night Live people, you talk about that in your oh, book. Oh, in the book. The, the way that it made you feel, it took you, took you back in oh. years. You know, I, the thing I think that is most curious to understand about what you've been through is how you have been able to, maybe you haven't been able to, deal with the media coverage of your life. The fact that your relationships, whether the facts that they, they put in the press were correct or incorrect, pretty much were dissolved and came about and dissolved in front of, in front of the world. That's right. What, where do you run to? When you're on the front page of every newspaper, and that Liz is running off with Richard, and you know, and everyone thinks, "Poor Eddie, what's happening to him?" And the world is reading about. Where do you go? I only run, ran once to the bathroom. <laughs> that was the only time I remember running. Running away. I was at a dinner at the Waldorf Astoria, and the, the media, the press of the world, were there, you know, and they were standing right behind me, and. Ralph Bunch and Phil Silvers was on the dais, and I had to make a little speech, and I was not in any shape then. I had just come back from, from Rome, and... Um, and everything uh, that happened. Everything. funny thing happened in Rome. In Cleopatra, yeah. yeah. very funny. But um, what was your question? The question was how you have handled thinking everyone 
everyone is reading about me this morning. I'm on the front page of every paper. Intimate details of my life are being discussed while people are drinking coffee. Everybody thinks, wow, Eddie Fisher, is another one's gone down the tubes. How have you handled the media's coverage of, of the destruction of all these marriages? Well, I, I didn't try to handle it. You can't handle it. What I think that I had a good a background of being a pioneer in television, yeah. live television, and getting things like you get them. You know, yeah. you get them while you're on it the happens. air. You know, and you, it's. But this was right immediate, and um, I think that had something to do with it. And also. Uh, You've got to perform. The show must go on. But did you did you enjoy this this attention? Oh no! You didn't enjoy it. Oh no! no. You didn't enjoy. No, it. and I mean, all oh, you know, some, especially some of the things that were said were you know just so heartbreaking. You know, and so they were killing. Have you ever seen? I think people wonder if you you see the. Have you ever seen Burton, Richard Burton, since? Oh yeah. What happens when when you run well, into we, him? No, I only re I ran him a couple of times, but the one time it's fun. He was really, I was with Elizabeth and Richard at the Regency Hotel, and we got had to do a discussion and talking, everything this was recently? fine. Just recently? No, this is uh, when he was doing Hamlet. Oh, okay. And uh, he said, uh, Liz, uh, do you think it would be a good idea uh, uh, if Eddie and I went over to the, th and she said something in her, mm -hmm. uh, the way she talks, she told him what to do. You know, bad. So taste. there were civil, so there were civil relationships among the three of you. I mean, it exists. If you're in oh, a room just together, for, people just, just for that moment, people shouldn't be embarrassed. I mean, if you're in a room together, what could we, what could we expect? If hypothetically you show up at a party with your girlfriend now, and uh, Liz is over in one corner and Burton's over another corner, and all of a sudden, uh, Burton would ignore me. He would ignore you. Yes, and Liz, uh, Elizabeth, I never, I just said Liz for the yeah. first time in my life. Elizabeth. It's, yeah. This is history. <laughs> no. Uh, I saw her at Sardi's before she took off all the weight and before she had, and I really, uh, I couldn't believe that I was married to this because woman. Of, because of physical change. Yes, yeah. but then when I saw her on the, uh, was it the Tony Awards? Tony Awards show, yeah. I was watching with some people and I applauded her. Yeah. I applaud. Let me ask you one, one very important question about your early television career. Do you think there could ever be another show on television with the same title as one of your shows in the <laughs> early 50s? And the title of the show was... Are you it's, ready for the title? It's Coke Time! That's correct. Eddie Fisher was a host of a program in the <laughs> early 50s called It's Coke Time. And you know how Coke, hard it Coca -Cola. was... Coca-Cola. How hard it was for the Coca-Cola company to get that title. They for years they tried to get it and yeah. i don't know why they couldn't uh -huh. but they finally got it and now they're stuck with it <laughs> they they've got it eddie this is uh, your autobiography which is um, here in paperback uh, eddie my life my loves it, th it did very well as a hardback thing one thing i want to ask well, it was not and it's number 1 in los angeles in, on in paperback. paperback there is a thing that says a gentleman should never kiss and tell oh my now you have done that in this book, and yes. I'd just like you to take a minute to explain to people who might criticize you for doing that why you why it was important to you to kiss and tell. Well, I don't know that it was important to for me to kiss and tell, but I was telling the story of my life as I saw it, as I saw it truthfully. Mm -hmm. uh, I am very embarrassed about some of the things. Uh, some of the women that I talked about and and uh, because it, a man should not kiss and tell but this is in hindsight this is after it's all over while I was doing doing it and I was also being being uh, how do you say fashioned by the publisher they this is what they wanted mm -hmm. this was not the cover the original cover of the book they didn't have Elizabeth and Debbie on the cover yeah. you know uh, it was just me, my life. Now, this is what the Harper and Row Publishing Company really wanted. Uh huh. You see, well. but there are five thousand five hundred pages in the vault 
that if you could read those pages, then we'd really have a... <laughs> 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 Will we ever read those pages? No. no. All right, let's review. Eddie Fisher's going to be down at Atlantic City uh, February 11th for the weekend at yes. the Sands. He comes back to New York, open, opens a two-week stint at the, in the Indigo the Supper Club wonderful new on the 15th. Club. It should be fun, and it'll be interesting to see you perform. I think there'll be some good new material in there as well as some of the great old stuff. Right, and you're going to be there. I'm coming, opening well, night. Yeah, it's nice to see you. Hey. Eddie Fisher, we'll be back with the chopped liver queen, the Long Island Entrepreneur of the Year. Here, right after this. Before you came, my time was running low. I was lost. The losing dice were tossed. My bridges all 